Hello and welcome to the Box Not Podcast. My name is Rick, where we talk about on this podcast anything TTRPG and or wargaming related, or whatever I'm feeling like. But for you, we are working on some piles of shame, getting some models painted up. That's the goal. I have this shelf of shame that I'm slowly working away from, and actually, it's getting pretty low. I'm very surprised. I added a few more models to it recently. Um, some Tempesta Scions, some proxies of those that I found. A great file online. And uh, this is going to be my Torox proxy. I think I'm going to run it as a Torox Prime, actually, which is why we're painting it in a blue. Anyways, it's been a long time. A long time since I posted a podcast. Why did it take so long? And where were you the last month, Rick? What the heck? Um... A lot of stuff has happened in the last month or so, and that's what we're going to kind of talk about today for the first little bit, and then we'll get into some funner stuff and some funner stuff to talk about, um, some more gaming-related hobby talk, and maybe about Gaines Workshop and some of the stuff that's come out. I don't know. We're going to kind of freestyle it today. But yeah, so I was gone for a month, um, and it was... It was kind of a necessary thing, and it was also uh, something I couldn't control. So let's see. It was October. I was working on the Cubes of Zinch uh, Part 2, and the reason for working on that is because randomly um, the Cubes of Zinch first video uh, had been popular when it came out. It got about 1,000 views in like a month or so, which is pretty good for this little channel, but uh, over the summer, like late summer, early fall, suddenly it exploded and kept going and going and going. And we went from like a thousand to 2000 views to something like 5,000 views within a couple of weeks. And I was like, I don't know where this is going or where it's coming from or whatever this is, but we obviously need to do a part two. I also put up a couple of votes on the video, uh, channel, uh, community channel page thing on YouTube and, it was either going to be uh, Bane Blade Part 2, uh, Chaos Knights uh, Part 2 or whatever, or uh, Cubes of Zinch. And everyone voted for Cubes of Zinch. Surprisingly, Chaos Knights was put at the bottom of the voting tier, which was kind of a surprise for me because I actually really enjoy that one. I enjoy those those models really, really a lot. But... The people had spoken, and so it was time to do a Cubes of Zinch Part 2, and with the wave of people coming in, I was like, we got to do this. And also, we were about to hit 1,000 subscribers, I think. Oh, and then we did the 1,000 subscriber special. Wow, this is all coming back around to me. Yeah, it was it was kind of a busy month, I think. It's kind of hard. The last month was a little bit of a blur, not going to lie. Um, and within that month, uh, after the 1,000 subscriber special and the Cubes of Zinch Part 2 and all that stuff... Um, I kind of hit an emotional stop, a a, a thing I never saw coming and something that like, I don't think you realize until you hit that point in whatever like personal goal you're doing. So like, for example, when I was what, two, three years ago, three, four years ago, I think it was, oh, it might be four years now. We'll say three. Um, when I was 24, 25, I had gained about 30 pounds more than I was comfortable with. And so, like, I my goal was to, like, you know, cut back those 30 pounds. And within two years, I did that. And it was interesting because once I got the to- at the top of that hill, I looked down from it and I was kind of like, huh, what now? You know, there's up from here or I could just continue to maintain or maybe I stop and I actually ultimately chose to stop. I went from like a gym rat to like just your everyday dude. And in all honesty, I was getting kind of burnt out and I was, I was going too hard. I was too militant with it. And yeah, um, I just stopped counting calories. I stopped working. I stopped eating. And, uh, it was just kind of one of those things where I I think I naturally was like petering out of it. And for Warhammer and the channel and everything like that, mostly for the channel, I had finally hit that 1,000 subscriber count, something I'd been aiming for for this whole year. Um, And we hit it. 
and I released the special, and we got like 300 views on it, and it kind of humbled me, I think. It reminded me I'm a still a small channel, and I was guaranteeing some things on there that was dumb. I uh, did not realize that my work was going to get into a slow uh, start and pace uh, of things, and so I, I wasn't making as much money as I was during our uh, rush season, so like getting things like stickers going off, probably not going to happen for a while, and I don't think it should because, again, we're a small-ass channel, and uh, it, it just is not something that's necessary right now. And so, yeah, it was a lot of, like, realization, like, oh, shit. And then also was like, huh, what now? And I'd been, like, stressing and anxiety and, like, really trying to push content out up until October, trying to come up with idea after idea after idea. Like, every single week I tried to come up with something new. And it was exhausting. And I was getting exhausted. And it was also coffee-induced, funny enough to say, uh anxiety and coffee induced anxiety and in the same month i decided to drop coffee um if any of you follow me on instagram you have you had probably seen my post on my story where it was like this long post that was like um talking about how in the last three to four years i had been battling anxiety and not only anxiety but coffee induced anxiety because in the mornings it was an extremely great motivator like it would get my gears turning it would really like kickstart my creativity like I did not realize how much caffeine played a role in how creative a person I was it's a very interesting little little substance and but the back the but the backlash with it was I would get panic attacks later in the day I'd get anxiety attacks it would just wreck my body and so within the same month of the Zinch uh, project and the 1,000 uh, subscribers special project, I dropped coffee and I realized not only did I become a calmer person and more well-maintained, uh, but my, my flow was thrown off. I didn't have this artificial boost of caffeine creativity almost. So I, yeah, I it was weird. And then I was experiencing burnout so those two in combo and then toward the end of the month and i talked to this person about talking about this here um but at the end of the month i got sick like just destroyed and then also like a week later when i got better uh my my ex or who was my partner at the time broke up with me um we had a relationship of like seven years and yeah it was freaking hard um so you can imagine like burnout and lack of creativity uh in combo with a breakup and with having been sick around all that time it's it, again it's all a blur and uh it was a hard fucking month and around the same time it was i think it was earlier in october i think it was around the same time i was sick um, I had a lifelong friend. Um, we were distant for a long time, uh, like several years. But, like, I grew up with this man. Um, he was my karate teacher, and I had known him for, like, 10 years or so, 12 years, something like that. This guy this guy impacted my life extremely. He was, he was huge. He was a, a valuable person in my life and and uh, an impactful and an inspiration in many ways and helped me get confidence and really build who I was and just be just be a a good person and a, and a person with perseverance he taught me a lot um he passed away uh in the same month of October um and I I knew it was going to be happening at some point because he was getting old, you know, that's what happens. He, you get old, you know, and I think he was reaching seventies or eighties. And I knew at some point I'd get the text, uh, from my, uh, family members because me and my family were a karate family. Like we grew up doing martial arts together for the first major portion of my life. Um, and yeah, when I got that text, I was just like, Oh shit. And you know, it didn't hit me uh, initially, but then I got sick and I wanted to go to his funeral and I wasn't able to go to his funeral. And it was, 
it it sucked, you know, because I knew that a lot of people were going to be there that I hadn't seen in years. And it was going to be kind of like a reunion, a sad reunion, but a moment to grieve and to be together. And I couldn't do that. I was messed up. I was at home. I was destroyed. I don't know if it was COVID or regular cold, but yeah, it had been a freaking month. And it was also one when I finally recovered and when the breakup happened and everything, I looked at YouTube and when I wasn't thinking about what to make, I was actually quite relieved. And that's when I knew I had a problem on my hands. I was like, oh, fuck. Because I knew I knew I, I, want, I want to do this long term. I want to do this full time. I want to do this as a job. So when I was feeling this, I was like, okay, well, we need to go back to the drawing board and figure out a way to do this. And I looked at the knights on my shelf, these armagers, um, these little models. And I thought, you know what? I don't think I'm ever going to do a video with these guys. And I'm just going to start building them. This is going to be for me. I'm going to film it, but I'm going to do it in a way I want to do it. I'm going to film it how I want to film it. I'm not going to film it as a tutorial. I'm not going to film it as anything else. I'm going to film it how I'd like to watch this. And I truly just took this project by the horns and made it for me. And so, spoilers, you guys are going to see that at some point in the next couple weeks. But, yeah, it was very helpful during this time. It was when I tapped into my hobby truly for me for the first time in a minute. And it was a good way of processing heavy emotions. Um, so, yeah. That's where I've been. Now, I'm sorry that that was not the podcast beginning I wanted to give you guys because when I set out to make this podcast, it's not, oh, Rick's personal diary entries. That's not what I aim for in these. But I do feel like you guys deserved some sort of like, hey, here's why. But also, it's, it's important to show people that even – artists suffer from like life because I feel like YouTube can can really give us this you know idea that oh these artists are creators they're just perfect in every which way or they're just oozing with creativity or they're just all the time good at their job or you know these are things that go through my head that I have to dispel all the time at least and and it's important to remind ourselves that we're human and remind the audiences that we're human and we're going through crap. And yeah. So that's why I felt like telling you guys. And I make this podcast so you guys can usually sit in the background and work on your models and paint along and just hang out and not have to worry about drama in my life or in the world. But today we had to break that ice and uh, open it with some with some backstory to what's happening. Not the most positive stuff, but life is better now. I want everyone to know who's listening to this. I'm actually doing really well. I'm surprised at my recovery emotionally and from being sick. I got sick again last weekend. Uh, <laughs> it sucked. I got sick again, but it was like a 24 hour fever issue, like flu thing. And then I was back up on my feet and I was back to making videos. Um, it's just been... <laughs> It's been a month. It's been like the last couple of months. Um, even with all that crazy stuff, it was definitely a, a month of taking an emotional break and a physical break too. Because being sick just forces you to sit down and to relax. And I watched so many shows, and I had so many friends reaching out, and I had, you know, a better time than I've had in, in tragic moments in my life than I think most of them to date, you know, it was really good. I, it was, it was one of those life changing moments that felt like it, it needed to happen and I'm doing better. And the fact that I'm back to YouTube, I feel like that's a good sign. I'm doing better. I went on to my Patreon and, um, I realized something, and it sounds dumb, but this is my first time ever doing a Patreon and a channel. And by the way, if you have not subscribed to Patreon, please check out the disc, uh, the, the link down below. We have access to a Discord at our $5 tier and access to behind-the-scenes stuff at our $3 and $5 tier at the Patreon where I post 
twice to three times a week of what is going on, as well as like schedules for future content. And yeah, that's what I did. I went on to the uh, Patreon and I was like, hey guys, sorry about the break. Here's all the stuff that's being listed out and here's what's going on. And um, I think it's good because it'll make me stick to my guns and it will get people hyped for future projects. And I'm really excited. Granted, we have two great Patreon members that I need to shout out right now. So let's do that. Our two patrons are RJ Bailey and Warrior Queen. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. It means the world. And they chose the Battle Boxer tier at the $5 tier. And that means so much. And that just makes me even more motivated to bring top quality content as much as I can and to use all the earnings to go towards paints and other things that the channel needs. If you guys want to help support, please click down below. Again, every penny goes back to the channel. I'm not using any of it currently for personal gains or means or even a coffee because, you know, people are always like, hey, you know, go to my Patreon so I can get a coffee. Coffee's cool, but I don't do that anymore. And uh, we need paint more than we do coffee. So be sure to check that out. And again, thank you to our two Patreon members. It means so much. But yeah, so we got a schedule and I'm going to stick to it and I'm excited. And it's nice to have a schedule that I feel confident in because I feel like past schedules, I've been kind of like, oh, maybe I'll do this or man, maybe I'll do that. It's like, no, these, these next four videos are going to be for sure something I want to do. Like, I feel like I want to do them. I've had them in the back of my mind for a long time. I've had them on lists. And so it's just time to do them. And so I'm really excited about that. In terms of Wargaming, we're going to talk about that next and turn up the mood quite a bit. Uh, I played about four games recently. And I actually decided to also humble myself there in the Wargaming world. I've always been really bad at Wargaming. Uh, strategy games in general. I've not been too good at strategy games. Usually what I tend to do is just go gung-ho into like one stat or one thing to not only cheese and or make things funny, but to make it simple for my like little shallow brain. So um, recently I actually reached out to one of my friends, several of my friends, and I said, hey, I want to get better at this game. I feel like, you know, I've been playing for almost two years and I just am not good at it. Not only am I very scatterbrained, but I just don't know where to start when it comes to, you know, fighting things on the battlefield. Um, because Warhammer has rules upon rules upon rules and things upon things and combos and stat lines and updates constantly. And then you have the other uh, armies you have to concentrate on. So... I sat down with one of my friends, and uh, his name's Carson, and he sat down with me, and he told me about how he likes to play Warhammer, and he gave me some very, very big tips that made me feel a lot more confident and walked me through a whole game, and even though it was embarrassing, because it's like, I... I don't want to feel like a little kid again. You know, I want to just know it all right now. I don't want to be crappy. I don't want to be silly. I don't want the obvious to look obvious and for me not to see it and to feel dumb. You know, you, you have to like give up that like security and pride that you have in yourself and go, hey, I'm not good at this and I'm going to look like a dumb dumb and I need your help. And it, to give that up is a big thing. Um, so that's what I did. And I sat down with Carson and he's like, hey, you should go about, you know, doing this next turn like this because of these reasons. Or I go about eliminating models or things like this because it does this outcome. And by sitting down and coaching me through one to two games, I think we did, um, the next games after I felt a lot more confident. It was like something I hadn't felt in a long time with Warhammer. And it was, it was so necessary. Like I, I got sick and tired of being steamrolled and feeling like I don't know what I'm doing and feeling like I'm not sure about my deployments and the cohesiveness of my armies and just going in it in a different mindset with confidence and having done coaching gave me just so much more time to feeling like this game was fun again, because like, if you don't feel like the game is fun, why are you painting the models? You know, it's art with utility to it. Uh, and that's the fun part, I think, for me. And if I can't utilize that utility to at least a little bit, 
but then I'm not going to have a good time. I don't want to just be the artist. I want to be the artist who can back himself up on the battlefield, you know? So, yeah. Also, I learned that knights are probably a really great way for people to get started in the hobby. Now, that might be a loaded thing to say amongst the community because for those of you who don't know, knights kind of play like queens on a chessboard. And if you have six queens and your buddy has a variety of pawns, uh, rooks, uh, knights, and, you know, bishops, it's going to kind of feel like a unbalanced game. And that's often why people don't like to play against knights. But that's just how the game plays currently. And some people believe they shouldn't be their own faction. I think they should. I think they're uh, cool enough and have enough lore and there's enough going on. But yeah, um, some people would disagree. And some people would even disagree that uh, beginners should go with knights because that gives them a false expectation of what Warhammer is like. And it's true because Warhammer is a complex game and you have a game with varieties of different troops and different uh, elites and different transports and different um, uh, HQs and all these different styles of gameplay that you can do with each one. Whereas Knights, it's like three main flavors, maybe two, and then you just play that continuously. And it can be really boring after a while. I played Knights, uh, about four games of Knights, and I found myself actually missing my Militarum who have quite a bit more complexity to them, I think, personally. Um, but it was a good way to relearn Warhammer because since I didn't have to worry about stats and combos and stats and combos constantly to such a massive degree with knights, I could just play them. They were so rules simple. You just kind of run the big robots down the road and start shooting things and just make sure you're learning how to prioritize targets. By doing that, it was it was extremely beneficial to learning, and it just eliminated a whole, like, strategic stressor that I didn't need. And so, yeah, I think knights are great for beginners, but it's important to branch away from knights for the reason of variety and learning how the game actually plays, and also, like, people don't like playing against them because... They're OP. If you're not building your army to fight knights, you're going to lose or get totally tabled. And if you are building them to fight knights, you're going to table the knights. So it's it's like, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a thing. So just something to consider if you ever are debating on playing the game. If you're going to play knights, just make sure you let your friends know before going and showing up to the game so they don't feel like they're going to get just steamrolled and also expect to either win really hard or lose really hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was my experience with uh, gameplay and tabletop playing. Um, oh, and then I had a Militarum game and this Militarum game with all the learning I did with the Knights and with uh, rules and stuff, I felt a lot more confident because I got to sit down and from uh, having been coached a little bit, I was able to minimize the stress of each event. Like I'd, I'd run my Stormlord up the table to the right and my Demolishers over to the left and like trying to do a pincer movement over here. And then when I got into a conflict or when it came to shooting, I would try to break it down to just those units in their little battle instead of trying to look at the whole battlefield and getting way overwhelmed and trying to figure out combos all the way. Like... I just tried to compartmentalize, compartmentalize, yeah, that word, into uh, compartmentalize into each section of the board and try to break things down eeny, into tiny, teeny, bitty little bits. And by breaking them down in that way, it was very useful. And it's something I suggest if you're playing Warhammer because uh, it's just such a large freaking dumb rules game but it is really really fun when i got sick a second time it was right around thanksgiving um i 
decided to paint for myself again. And I chose two models on my shelf of shame that will probably never be posted on YouTube. Um, they were for my Slanesh army, and they're models from the Bestiarium uh, miniatures line. The Pain, or the Flesh and Agony set, I think, were Pain and Agony. Um, and the reason being is because they are uh, beast-like monsters with uh, titties and, uh, uh, yeah, nudity. And not in, like, a grotesque, like, overtly sexual way. More like a cool, beasty, uh, like... Euronymous Bosch kind of way like it's like creepy and malformed but it is nudity and YouTube does not like that and I did not want to risk having that up on YouTube so I thought if I'm never gonna make a video of these guys I gotta get them off my shelf because it's almost been a year so I started painting with them and I, I decided no rules and I went all full experimental and I'm definitely gonna be posting them on the Patreon for Patreon members because you know, it'll be safe there and no one's going to judge me there. And it's work that I think needs to be shared. I think art should be shared. It's doing a disservice if it sits on a shelf or in a room. It needs to be viewed by either you or others. That's my own personal thing. Because, like, what's the point of art if you're not going to look at it, you know, and have fun memories of it? So, yeah, those will eventually be posted. But it was fun. I was trying all sorts of colors and inks and, like, trying to get themes similar to the army from the past but also make them individualistic and experimenting with like layers upon layers of of airbrushing and adding blue hues and like trying to make things look snake like and like it was it was a challenge it was a challenge because i went in with with no technique i absolutely was just like what happens if we do this what happens if we do that and um it was fun it was a lot of fun. They're going to look very different from the army. They're going to have similar color tones, but they're going to look very different. And that's okay. It, I don't want to replicate the same thing I've done and done and done again. I think if I have another army coming up, which is not going to be a thing for a while, um, I want to make every unit a little different from the next. Because not only would that keep me interested artistically, but that would keep me like feeling like I'm learning because when building an army, I feel like batch painting and like getting units together in massive amounts and trying to get them all done at once and keep them from, you know, sitting on your shelf forever. Um, it's a great strategy, but also you can end up doing the same thing over and over and over again and get stuck in an artistic rut. And that's kind of where I'm feeling right now. I'm feeling like I'm in an artistic rut with terrain and model painting. I actually haven't painted a tiny, tiny model, like a, a little model, a mini, in like, whew, I want to say almost seven months, maybe. Yeah. Like sat down and like glazed and wet blended and edge highlighted. I haven't done it in so long. And I'm a little scared to get back to it because it's like, I used to be really good at that. I used to be very proud of my miniature painting, but I've been stuck doing styrofoam cubes and big old nights and uh, just like, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a little terrifying. Actually, that's a lie. I remember, um, <clears throat> I, remember I did a Caluxus Assassin painting and I was going to film it and put it on the channel, but I actually got sick of it halfway through, not of the model, but of the painting. Cause I was trying, I decided to push myself. I was like, I'm going to do it like the heavy metal box art. Cause I used to be able to do something similar, um, with my, with my space Marines, not all the way heavy metal, but I decided to try to do it like the box art. And I actually ended up very pissed like halfway through. I was like, Oh my God, I hate this. I hate everything about this, the edge highlighting, the edge highlighting, uh, the edge highlighting, <laughs> just edge upon edge upon edge highlighting of crap. And I just like, I'm like, what's the point? So many other projects I've done don't need this. Why is this a standard, you know, that has been made? And so I decided, you know what? I decided, you know what? I'm not going to do that. And I think I'm going to repaint the Cluxus Assassin in a different way. And I want to try to tackle it in a way that's not 
so commercialized and like so easy to read. I want to I want to do something like uh totally not panicking on Instagram or like uh the grim dark compendium. You know, I want to do something terrifying and brutal and realistic but also still artistic, you know, and different. So yeah, maybe I'll do that video at some point. The Cluxus assassin in a in a grim dark style cuz it's a cool model. It's a funny model. It's a very much games workshop model. Like you look at it and you're like, "Oh, that thing looks ridiculous." And that's what makes it fun. Um but yeah, it it just I don't like it. I realize I don't like their style. Like if you like their style, that's fine. I need to say this right now because some people get really insecure. You paint your models however you want. If you like the box art, go for it. There's a reason why the box art is the box art because it looks beautiful and consumer friendly and clean and it tells a simple story. It has great colors. It's painted by professionals that know what they're doing. Like there's a reason why people aim for the box art and it's totally fine. But for me personally, for my fun, I need to paint how I need to paint and I need to do it in a way that feels like just a good time. So, yeah. Yeah. That's where I'm at painting wise. I want to make things unique and fun and different. Um I don't want to do batch painting anymore. Yeah. Oh, and something else that we're going to be doing on this uh podcast slash uh shelf of shame is re repairs. Like repairing and repainting old models and like fixing things. Because I was thinking about it. I was like, I'm eventually going to run out of things to paint. Shelf of shame wise. Seriously. I have about four-ish armies. And Militarum's nearing completion. Uh, and I don't have much else after that. I might start rebuilding space marines. And I might like optimize them. And make some models, but like knights are basically done, um, and demons. I don't know if I'll ever play demons. They they just might be a shelf, a shelf item, a showcase item. I might make more zinch cubes in my own spare time, but like, I don't know. I'm kind of hitting like a road where it's like I don't know what to build now. I was thinking maybe I'll build some kill teams, which are smaller little models, and that might be a great way to that to do that individualistic style of painting but like yeah i'm a little scared you know like oh my gosh there might be an end to all these models do i build a fifth army i don't know that seems like a lot do i need a fifth army no do i want a fifth army kind of like i mean i don't know these are all the thoughts that brew in my head like yes no maybe yes like it's like ah there's so many models and so many cool things like i love Tyranids, and I love some of the models by Puppet Wars that make, like, proxies for them. And, um, like, I, I saw uh, an army of those painted. I can't remember who did them. But it was, like, a teal, a teal carapace-looking army with pink accents. And it was beautiful. It was gorgeous. And it was such a different-looking army. These are not Tyranid models. But they look like they could have been like from a, a, a different hive. It's really cool. So like, yeah, it's like, I don't need a fifth army, um, but I kind of want one. Oh, last thing. It's crazy. It's a big project. I got two big personal projects that I'm doing on amongst all the videos. One of them, my cousin is commissioning me for a um, world eaters army building him a combat patrol box of world eaters and he wants them to be purple and that's going to be fun. Um, he's going to commission me for those. It's a very low price point, but I kind of want the experience and I kind of want to just paint some models. And then the other thing is one of my buddies amongst my Warhammer group, he sent me a text and we've been talking about this for a while as a group. He came up with a army strategy um, when he looked it up and he can field fuel <laughs> he can field up to 200 and like 47 infantry models with tyranids and then have a couple hqs 
and we're talking about how crazy of a of a game that would be and how cool it would look and then i was like realistically with two resin printers because one of my other buddies has one and maybe a hundred dollars worth of resin we could print all those models and then we like did the math if all five of us were to split the resin and like do it as a christmas gift for this guy and it was like 25 ish dollars 27 ish dollars per person we were like we could do this and he was like i don't know i don't know if i want to do it. it's a it's a big project there's a lot of painting and to store it would be a pain and to play it would be kind of crazy he's like let me think about it and then three weeks later he texts me he's like let's fucking do it i was like oh my god it's happening so basically um at some point i don't know if i'll ever show it on the channel but at some point i'm gonna be printing around 200 tyranid models just print after print after print after print and then, and then uh yeah it's gonna be freaking crazy um it's gonna be fun i'm terrified but i'm excited because uh it's going to be a great painting day. Like, we're all going to sit down assembly line style. Someone's, uh, I'm going to try to zenithal the majority of them. So someone will sit down, contrast paint one, contrast paint two, and then third person, like, details, maybe some highlights. And then third uh, third or fourth person or whatever number I'm on uh, is going to put some PVA glue and then base them and then, like, set them aside. And, like, we're just going to do that. And we calculated how many models we would have to each paint in a day to get it done. And it's, like, 58 models. Um so yeah, it's possible, but it's going to be, it's going to be crazy. <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, I think the rest of my friends are a little dreading it, which fair enough because we all struggle to get our own models done on our own time, but I think we can do it. I really think we could. I, I, I think it's possible to do it in a day or two or maybe three, just get a couple of, you know, drinks and some snacks and throw in a couple movies in the background and just fucking go. We could do it. Yeah, so that's going to be fun. Those are all the future projects and things that are going on in my life currently. Um, I'm hoping that you guys are excited for future videos and whatnot. We just dropped a terrain video. I'm very happy with how it came out. It was a great break from like making the knights and all the other models and stuff. And I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Um, if you guys want to see the schedule for the next couple weeks, get on that Patreon. Everything helps over there, and I would love to see and talk to you guys in the Discord. Um, if you guys enjoyed, please hit that like button and subscribe. It's all free. As always, thank you for supporting me in BoxDot. My name is Rick, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.